Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to why more Americans than ever are going child free. Now this, I mean, in the long term, if this trend continues, and I think it's actually, it is like actually happening in a lot of Western countries, it's going to be a big problem because, you know, if like the, the system that we live in, like the capitalist system that, that we live in, it needs people to pay taxes, right? Because that's how they fund the pensions for the older people. That's how it pays for the older people's like healthcare and stuff like that. So if people are having less kids, who's going to work the jobs? And then, you know, that generates the tax revenue for all of that stuff. But I can I can totally get it. I totally understand it, you know. Everything is really expensive compared to how it used to be. So, you know, if you're struggling financially, why, like the more pragmatic approach, I guess, is to not have a kid. Because if you can barely afford to keep your lights on, why would you bring another person into that? But on the other hand, we do need more children, like we do. So yeah, this video should be quite interesting. We got married fairly young. And we both just decided for many reasons we didn't want kids. And then mm. at some point we heard the acronym DINK and I think Dink. just really fell in love with it. There are more Americans that are- Dual income, no kids, gotta be. Deciding gotta be. not to have children and it's purposeful. This new trend has led to the rise of a new type of household, more commonly referred to as DINKs. Dual income, no kids. Oh yeah, dual income, no kids. That's perfect for us. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Children are the death of net worth. Pretty crude, uh, but honestly very true. This household configuration of uh, dual income. But should you be looking at it from a purely financial perspective? Though? Partners living alone without children is on the rise. In 2022, it was around 43% of households, and that's about a 7% increase from a decade previously. In 2022, 43% wow. of Americans surveyed said they'd want to get married. But just a little more than a quarter said they were sure about wanting children. The term dink is becoming more prominent now because of financial challenges. And they see children as just another financial challenge that maybe they, they don't want to take on. So what is it like to live with a dual income and no children? And will it be the future of American households? According to a 2023 survey of Dinks, finance played a major role in their decision to not have children. More than a quarter of respondents said they simply aren't able to financially support a child yeah. at the moment. Yeah, when we totally advise the clients about having children, we honestly don't even give them the full real details and the real numbers. It's one of those things, if you actually see the math of it all, it might make you decide to not have children. <laughs> It costs a family an estimated $310,605 to raise a child born in 2015 to age 18, adjusted wow. for higher future inflation. And that doesn't even include the cost of college. So if you Goodness look at inflation me, lot, it, it? within the child care market, it surpasses general overall inflation within um, the economy. Some couples are contemplating having children at the same time that they're still paying off student loans that they incurred mm. when they were 18 to 22 years old. One of my very closest friends, uh, she's been struggling with the reality that the take-home pay she makes is about equal to what the child care would costs. be. That this to me is crazy. Like you've got a country like Estonia where child care is basically free. I think it's funded by, you know, taxes. Like that would encourage more people to have kids instantly. How can, you know, childcare be like two grand a month or something like that? It's just so expensive. A really hard position to be in. Seeing our friends really struggle with that balancing act has, I think, made me appreciate the flexibility that we have financially because we don't have children. Besides saving on childcare, Dinks can also fully reap the benefits of combining their finances. To look at both of our incomes coming in and see how we're able to handle all of that because we don't have extra finances with a child, it's much more comfortable. We get to focus more on 
the things that we want to do and, and saving a lot of that money for the future and worry less about the the day-to-day -day finances of the house and our bills. Money. <sighs> yeah, you're gonna have more disposable income for sure. And I guess there are a lot of couples who biologically probably can't have kids as well. So you have to factor that in. But I don't know, part of my brain thinks if I was to do this and God forbid me and my, if I, I'm not married yet, but it, like if me and my wife divorce and I'm like 55 or something and I've got no kids, all my friends are like, with their families, you know, will I be lonely? You know, how am I going to spend my days? You know, that's, I don't know. There's the only can't shake that, that feeling. Dicks can save on. The free time is actually one of the biggest things for me. So we built me a little office slash bedroom out here. We definitely have some more expensive hobbies. I uh, build mechanical keyboards, like uh, computer mm. keyboards in my spare time. And just parts and stuff for that can be very expensive. Not having children has given us the freedom to pursue other things. Remodeling our home, um, I am a beekeeper. I'm really handy and I like doing stuff around the house. I wouldn't have the time to just do that after work if I feel yeah, like it, if I had no you know, a child to care for. Few it's expenses true. leave dinks. You know, you can have a full, you know, you can live a very fulfilling life without children, for sure. More disposable income to play with. Disposable income is power, it's stability, and for many couples, it's security. The security that having, you know, six months of income saved for emergencies gives you, that security was so helpful to us during COVID when I was out of work for six months. Let's have like a smaller tractor style next year, we're gonna get a zero. We have more tolerance for chaos, I think, because of our savings. Our new savings goal, which is like our shoot for the stars and hit the moon kind of is saving four grand a month. According to census data, Dinks can save 9% more for retirement each year compared to dual income couples with children. Mm -hmm. Another 2021 study found that childless adults aged 55 and older had a personal- I think financially, you know, it's hard to argue that not having kids is probably, if it's the money that you're thinking of, it's probably the better thing to do, the smart thing to do. But I think because I've always, always, always wanted to have kids of my own, I just don't think, um, and plus I think, do we have to look at everything through the financial lens? But I guess if it's make or break, you kind of have to. A net worth of $153,900, compared to $130,400 for biological parents. If you have a dollar and if you have to choose how to use it, a DINK can prioritize savings, retirements, investments, both in the equities market, as well as things like real estate or second properties. The hardest part of investing is just having the cash to do it. And so when you don't have your cash going to expenses that are related to children, that cash can go into those investment goals. We started investing in our early 20s. I feel really safe because we have this strong nest egg of ETFs that are accessible and fairly liquid. And then we also have our long-term savings, which are, you know, tied up in IRAs. We can choose what our aging years look like because we've saved to plan for that eventuality. It is well documented that the younger you are when you start your savings and your retirement portfolio, the better off you are in the long run in terms of aggregate savings and your ability to accrue savings and wealth. Just take the $310,605 it would take for a middle income married family to raise a child. While child expenses can vary significantly by age and location, that could easily represent more than $15,000 in otherwise investable funds per year. Mm. It's a Consider lot. the it's power of annually compounding interest, and that $15,000 per year can grow to more than $500,000 in just 18 years, assuming 7% annual returns. This nest egg could also help Dinks secure more assets for themselves. Dual earner mm. adults living together who both have jobs and have been saving are really able to put 
um, a heftier, relatively large down payment on a home, um, which then reduces their monthly mortgage and has all of these other benefits. I would love to see a poll of um, people, like if you could get a large group of couples who didn't have kids and a large group of couples who did have kids and you survey both of those groups and you ask them both, you know, are you happy with your decision? You know, are you happy that you decided to not have kids? Are you happy, you know, that you did? Just to see and compare those results, that would be amazing. You're paying less interest over the long run. I was fortunate enough to have a good little nest egg gifted to me by my grandparents. Um, and that helped us buy our first house. But then from there, living in that house, living in a place with a lower cost of living like Utah, having dual income helped us build all this savings so that when we sold that home and moved to Massachusetts, we had an even larger nest egg that allowed us to buy a more expensive home in a higher cost of living area. I'm not totally sure where we would be if we had a child as well. That extends beyond just purchasing a home. There are lots of big item, big ticket investments that we um, tend to make earlier on in adulthood to the extent that we can pay as much of it as possible up front. That does have a rippling benefit for us as we age. Hmm. But the rise of dinks isn't such great news for the economy as a whole. Of course. <laughs> Historically, lower birth people. rates have been associated with slower economic growth. Uh -huh. And critical social programs such as Social Security depend heavily on population growth. We shouldn't strive to have a generation of young adults that are not reproducing. That would not be he healthy for society. It wouldn't be healthy for the economy. I think it would be a disaster long term. Like, you know, Japan have actually started financially encouraging people to have more kids. You know, they've they've developed like an AI system to help, you know, people start dating more and stuff like you just you'd have to change everything about society if the population started to shrink, like everything would have to change. I'm not not saying it would be worse, but everything would be different. It wouldn't be healthy for us as we age. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why we do want to take investments in the next generation seriously. For Dinks, baby. the biggest challenges are often not financial. And I think we freaked a lot of people out when we were just a young married couple and that was all. There was no baby afterwards. I had family members asking if something was wrong because it's been five years of a young, healthy couple not producing a child. I think that there is a self-care aspect that is minimized when you're a dink. So there are many mom groups or, you know, daddy daughter dances. There aren't yeah, groups for, true. hey, I'm a professional woman and I just want to go home and read a book and take care of myself tonight. I think on the other side of that, there can be times where in certain circumstances and circles, it's harder to make friends. There is also the potential for more financial responsibility from other family members. There could be additional pressure as dinks get older for people within their family to assume that they can take care of certain obligations. For example, really? if you have an aging parent, dinks might be the ones that are relied upon because uh, it's presumed you have disposable have time income or you have disposable time. time to yeah, take on yeah. these responsibilities. According <laughs> to experts, the number one advice for dinks is to prioritize savings and figure out clear goals for the future. If anybody is considering becoming a dink, as a financial planner, I highly recommend that strategy. I recommend it to my clients. When my clients tell me that's an intentional choice they're gonna make, I am a big fan of it. With that disposable income, make a budget. How do you wanna spend it? Make sure you put aside some money for fun, but also make sure you put aside some money for investments and they can be traditional or non-traditional investments and then revisit it annually to make sure it still makes sense. I think if you're considering not having children in your life, make sure your partner's on the same page as you mm. and that you have- Yeah, don't, don't spring that on them, you know, like after the marriage, like, oh, by the way, I don't have any kids. <laughs> and they thought you wanted kids all along in that value in isolation without your partner too. Yeah. Don't go into the dink lifestyle just like, oh, I don't have kids, so I just have more money and can do whatever. It still takes the work of like 
planning for your future, putting money away. If you're not gonna have kids, make sure you still save money for your future because the world is a weird place right now and who knows what it's gonna be like in another 30, 10, 40 years, years well, when we he's, go he's to right. retire. He's not wrong there. Hmm, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, like, you know, if, if people don't wanna have kids, obviously, that's absolutely fine. They, they're going to have a, a very fulfilling life, I'm sure, you know, without you know, having children. Me personally, I, I want children. Um, I think it would uh, be probably the best thing I ever do, probably. Um, but the government really has a problem on its hands because it seems like from what I heard, this couple, it was mainly the money. It was mainly the money, it seemed like to me. And it's, it's true, very valid. At the end of the day, it's just so expensive. How, you know, childcare, you know, costing as much as an income, you know, it's just not sustainable. Like, cause then what you're doing is basically one person in the couple is gonna stay home to look after the kid because it doesn't make sense. If you're gonna be paying as much as you're earning for someone else to look after your kid, you might as well look after your kid. But then the whole family's relying on one income, you know, if anything happens to the person who's earning, what does the family do? You know, the government needs to step in here because at the end of the day, you know, if it wants to continue this system of exponential growth, which is what every single financial market depends on, like, you know, that's why stock prices keep going up because, you know, people expect the companies to sell more products to people. Like if the populations go down worldwide, who's gonna buy the products? That means companies, the share price will go down, job losses, you know, society would just be massively, massively like worse off. Like the current system, the current iteration of society, the capitalist system that we live in, you know, so yeah, I do think the government really, sh I think they, the, I actually think the government know about this issue, about the declining birth rate issue. Um, it's particularly bad in South Korea and Japan. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad here and in the US as there, but we shouldn't wait for it to get to that point. But then again, if you still don't want to have kids, you know, obviously there should be no pressure on a couple to have kids. But all I'm saying is, you know, if we want, you know, plenty of jobs to still be available and stuff, we need companies. And if we want companies, we need buyers of products. Who buys products? It's people. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.